The first major thing you need to be doing if you want to lose belly fat but not lose muscle is to make sure that you're not spiking insulin, especially not spiking it consistently throughout the day. Now, insulin is our storing hormone. It completely shuts off the fat burning process called lipolysis. And insulin is released in response to certain foods. The foods that will most greatly spike the storing hormone insulin are going to be starches and sugars. Protein to some extent will spike insulin a bit, but it's usually only when it's combined with some type of starch or sugar that it's going to have very much of an impact. And then fat has zero response on insulin. And it turns out something called hyperinsulinemia, which just means high levels of insulin in your blood, appears to specifically lead to weight gain around the belly and visceral fat. This is probably where studies that compare low carb diets, which are going to not greatly spike the storing hormone insulin versus low fat diets that inherently have a higher amount of those insulin spiking carbohydrates, consistently find that the low carb or the low insulin spiking protocol leads to lower body fat than the low fat. And I'm not just talking about weight, I'm talking about body fat specifically, because if you're looking to achieve a weight loss goal, that's what you want. You don't wanna be losing muscle, you wanna be losing body fat. So one really easy step that you can do to not greatly spike that storing hormone insulin is to simply remove a lot of those really starchy foods or really sugary foods. That in itself can make a lot of progress. So this includes things like breads or pastas, all the various added sugars, including seemingly healthy ones like honey, agave, or coconut sugar, and even very simple sugars like fruit juices. So even if you're not having something like orange juice on the daily, but you are having green juices, I would just check the ingredients label there to make sure it's not loaded with a ton of apple juice. Unfortunately, that happens all the time. Which my name's Autumn and I'm a certified clinical nutritionist with my master's nutrition human performance. And today's video is sponsored by my favorite bone broth company, Kettle and Fire. More on them in a bit. Now the second really important factor to make sure that you're losing body fat but not losing muscle is to make sure that you're getting enough protein for your body's needs. Now that might seem obvious, but unfortunately a lot of people aren't doing this. Protein breaks down into amino acids and those amino acids are needed to either build or repair your muscle mass, which means it's crucial for that body recomposition goal. Not enough protein can lead to muscle wasting as well as a lot of hunger, which directly will work against your weight loss goal because when you are feeling more hungry, this will typically lead to more snacking. And every time we eat, we're releasing the storing hormone insulin. So by snacking or eating frequently throughout the day, instead of just having a two or three meal structure, this will lead to those consistently higher levels of insulin, which leads us back to that tip number one. So protein is crucial not only for muscle protection to make sure that you're building muscle, but it's also crucial to help prevent snacking because when you eat enough protein, it causes your body to release the satiety hormone, peptide YY. And this helps to make you feel full and satisfied and not crave anything between meals, which then allows insulin to dip back down between meals, which I also did a video on how you can calculate your protein needs. You can check that out right here. And if you find that you're still particularly hungry, even though you are including protein. A really great side tip that you can use to help boost satiety and prevent hunger between meals is to add collagen to your meal. And this is alongside the protein that you're already having because there's actually a study where they found that when you combine collagen with a normal protein source, it helped to boost satiety by 40% more than just the protein alone, which is why today's sponsor, Kettle and Fire, can be such a useful tool. Each cup of their bone broth comes packed with a ton of high quality whole food source of collagen. They simmer their grass-fed bones for over 20 hours to make sure that they're maximizing the collagen extraction so that you can actually get the most bang for your buck and the most collagen when you're having the bone broth. And they come in amazing flavors. They have their original bone broths with chicken or with beef, but my personal favorite has been their chipotle beef broth. It takes your chilies to the next level. I've been using it as the base for a lot of my chilies and it adds so much flavor while getting a huge boost of collagen and satiety in the process. And Kettle and Fire's offering my viewers the AM Peeps 20% off plus free shipping on their their bone broths when using code Autumn Bates at checkout. So definitely make sure that you check out Kettle and Fire. I'll have the link with the discount code listed down description below and definitely try out the Chipotle beef broth. It's amazing. Now the third most important factor for making sure that you lose body fat while not losing muscle is to actually stimulate your muscles. This is something I think a lot of people forget about is that they go to eat a lot of protein and they're like, okay, I've got that covered, but they think that's going to turn directly into muscle. That's not really how it works. We need both to be building muscle. We need our muscles to be stimulated with exercise, with resistance training, but we also need the tools to repair those muscles and then build more muscle. It's really metabolically expensive for our body to make and create new 
muscle. So it's not going to do it if it doesn't need to. In fact, it'll start tearing it down if it's not being used. So if your goal is to build or maintain muscle while losing body fat, it's crucial to be incorporating some amount of resistance or strength training. And there are a lot of ways to go about this. If you're not a gym fan, you don't necessarily need to be hitting the gym 24 seven, but incorporating some type of either body weight exercise, strength training, resistance training three to five times per week will be really important for building or maintaining that muscle mass. Which in fact, if you wanna see my workout schedule, you can check out this video next. Also, if you're new to my channel and you love this science-backed information, make sure you subscribe right here. Come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. All right guys, thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you in my next video.